Hello and welcome to video 5 for week 3. In this video I'm going to do a couple of proof questions that deal with the definitions and concepts in this week. Let's start with talking about intersection of linear subspaces. So we defined a linear subspace, we defined it algebraically as something where if we have two things in the subspace, the sum is still in the subspace, we say that's closed under addition. And if we have a vector in the subspace, any multiple of the vectors in the subspace, we say it's closed under scalar multiplication. So the proposition I want to prove here um, is that the intersection of two linear subspaces is itself a linear subspace. All right, so I need to work with two linear subspaces, so I'll call them L1 and L2. By definition, they are closed under addition and scalar multiplication. I can use that fact, and I have to use that fact. What I want to prove is the intersection is a linear subspace. So I have to prove that the intersection is closed under addition, and the intersection is closed under scalar multiplication. So if I have to take two things in the intersection, show that their sum is also in, in the intersection, and I have to take a vector in, in the intersection, show that any multiple of that vector is also in the intersection. Those are the two things that define a linear subspace. So those are the two properties I have to satisfy. Well, let's do the first one here. So I'm assume that I have two things that are in the intersection. The intersection means things that are in both subspaces. So this implies that u is in L1, and v is in L1, and u is in L2, and v is in L2. Both of them are in both. So if u and v are in L1, L1 is a linear subspace. That's part of the assumption, the intersection of two linear subspaces. So I'm assuming I start with linear subspaces. So since L1 is a linear subspace, the sum is also in L1. That's one of the two properties of a linear subspace. If two things are in it, the sum is still in it. And the same thing is true for L2. U and V are both in L2. L2 is a linear subspace, so the sum is in L2. But now I have that the sum is in both L1 and L2. By definition, that's what the intersection of a set means, things that are in both. Therefore, the sum is a set of the intersection, is an element of the, the intersection. That's half of what I've done. I've proved that if I have two things in the intersection, the sum is still in the intersection. So the intersection is closed under addition. I also need to do scalar multiplication. So let me take a scalar, and let me take a vector that's in the intersection. So it is in both u, L1, and it is in L2. Since it's L1, in L1, and L1 is linear, any multiple of it is in L1. Since it's in L2, and L2 is linear, any multiple of it is in L2. And that means that any multiple AU is in both L1, L2. That means it's in the intersection by the definition of the intersection. So in the previous slide, I said that if I start with U and V, their sum is in, the, is in the intersection. And here I said if I start with a vector, it's multiple for any multiple, any scalar is in the intersection. Those are the two things that need I need to satisfy so I can conclude that L1 intersect L2 is a linear subspace. Let me do another one which is quite similar. We said that hyperplanes and other loci were linear or affine subspaces. We didn't really prove it in the notes, so I want to prove it for a special case of a hyperplane through the origin. So a hyperplane through the origin, I'm working in Rn, a hyperplane is the locus of one linear equation. I can write the equation in the dot product form. So n is a vector, is, is a normal, and u is a generic vector in Rn. I'm thinking of it that way. So I dot product the normal. Since it goes to the origin, the constant has to be zero. We said that any locus that goes to the origin, any hyperplane, has constant equal to zero. So all the vectors in the hyperplane satisfy this equation for some vector n, which is the normal. I need to prove the two things. I need to prove that the sum of two things in the hyperplane remain in the hyperplane. I need to prove that any multiple of something in the hyperplane remains in the hyperplane. Those are the two properties of a linear subspace closed under addition, closed under scalar multiplication. So let me assume that I have two things in the hyperplane, and as before, um, A will be any real number. Well, if I have two things in the hyperplane, I want to consider their sum. So two vectors in the hyperplane, their sum, and I want to see if their sum satisfies the equation of the hyperplane. The hyperplane is defined by its equation, so if the sum of two vectors satisfies the equation, that also is a vector in the hyperplane. Now I'm going to use the properties of the dot product, which I defined in week two. First, the dot product is distributive over vector addition. So this n dot a sum can be n dot u plus n dot v. 
that's the dis distributive property for the dot product. But then u is in the hyperplane, so n dot u must be zero. v is in the hyperplane, so n dot v must be zero. So I just get zero plus zero, I get zero. And that means that u plus v must be in the hyperplane, because if I put it in the equation, it satisfies. Its dot product with the normal is in fact zero. So that's good for the sum. What about for the multiple? So let's say I take a multiple of something in the hyperplane and see if it satisfies the equation of the hyperplane n dot u equals zero. The properties of the dot product say I can pull constants out of the dot product. Again, that's from week two, properties of the dot product. So this constant a can come out front. I can do the dot product first and then multiply by the constant a. But here, since u is in the vector, is in the hyperplane, uh, it satisfies the equation of the hyperplane. So n dot u must be zero, so I get a times zero. And of course, any constant times zero is zero. That tells me that the vector a u also satisfies its dot product with the normal is zero. So that's good. And that allows me to conclude the hyperplane is in fact a linear subspace. This geometric object, this locus, satisfies the algebraic condition that the sum of any two vectors on it remains on it and the multiple of any vector on it remains on it.